Welcome back to day number two of the 2023 NCAA Division II Men's and Women's Track and Field Championships. We're here at the Thunder Bowl in Pueblo, Colorado for day two of the championships. We are going to crown eight more national champions today, and we've got preliminary events in quite a few events on the track. We've just overcome a short lightning delay here in Pueblo, but the sun is back out again, and you can see that the first event on the track will be the preliminaries in the women's 200 meters, and they are setting their blocks. All of our afternoon field events were delayed just a little bit, so they are getting ready to get back underway. Our men's discus throw, our women's high jump, and our men's triple jump, those events were delayed. They are warming up and getting ready to compete. And then our events on the track are all delayed by 25 minutes, but we will have the full complement of preliminaries and finals. And in our men's decathlon, that event was also delayed as they were just beginning the javelin. So the men in the decathlon are finishing up the javelin, and they will have their 1,500-meter run 30 minutes after that event. So we don't know the exact time yet, but that will fit into your schedule this evening as well. As you look at the first heat of the women's 200, we will be running three heats, qualifying the top two in each heat, plus the next three fastest times to the finals. And our women's finals are scheduled for 7.45 tomorrow evening. So as you can see, the sun is back out. We had a beautiful morning of competition. The clouds rolled in off the mountains. We had slight rain, but quite a bit of lightning. Delayed the meet for approximately maybe an hour and a half to two hours at most, but it did come at the best time of the day. And we are just 25 minutes now behind as we get ready to resume competition on the track in just about one minute. Our lane assignments for this first section of the women's 200 Lyric Holman of Fort Hayes will be in lane two. Malaysia Johnson in lane three from St. Augustine's. In lane four from Simon Fraser, Marie Eloise Leclerc. In lane five from Pittsburgh State, Tania Looney. In lane six from CSU San Bernardino, Soraya Copeland. In lane seven from Shippensburg, it'll be Leah Graybill. And in lane eight from California, Pennsylvania, Devon Franklin. So as usual, the seating affects what heat you are in, but once the heats are assigned, the lanes are randomly drawn. So it just worked out that our overall number one seed, Devon Franklin from California, Pennsylvania, she'll be in this first heat on the outside in lane eight, and you see her there getting ready on the track. Season best 22.65. She was our indoor silver medalist in the 60 meters this year, fourth indoors in the 200 for the three-time Pennsylvania State Athletic Champion, and she will be in lane eight. There you see in lane four, that is Marie Eloise Leclerc from Simon Fraser. Often people forget that the NCAA does include athletic institutions in Canada and Puerto Rico and a number of those athletes are represented here today. And uh, the first race on the track, we will see Marie Eloise Leclerc, the sophomore from Simon Fraser in lane four. Again, the top two will automatically advance the next three fastest times. And we are off in our first heat of the day here in Pueblo, Colorado. And you can see quickly on the outside of the track, that is Devon Franklin from California, Pennsylvania. She'll be first off the curve. And as they are now running north to south with the wind behind them. And all the way through the finish line for Devon Franklin. So she'll take that automatic first qualifying. She'll run 22.65.
with a plus 4.6 wind reading. So you can see quite gusty down on the track today. 4.6 reading. Second place will go to Marie-Louise Leclerc from Simon Fraser. So they will take the two automatic qualifying spots. And you'll see that Looney's 23.10, Graybill's 23.46, and Copeland 23.56. Those will be the three best times on the bubble. Setting the lanes now for heat number two. In lane two, we'll have Selena Arona Alcazar from the Academy of Art. Sierra Arsenault from Colorado Mesa will be in lane three. Lane four, Alana Wilson of West Texas A&M. Lane five, Samantha Payne from Catawba. Lane six, Kaya Epps from Walsh. Lane seven, Ayana Fields from Cal Poly Pomona. And in lane eight, Carissa Perry from West Texas A&M. Fastest qualifier in this heat, sitting in lane seven, Ayana Fields from Cal Poly Pomona. She was third in this race last year and second indoors in the 200, and she comes in with a season best time of 22.92. Though again, random draw, but our top seeds drawing outside lanes, which most athletes in a 200 meters would prefer to be on the outside. The curve is not quite so sharp. And the quick update here in the men's triple jump. We are on the third jump of the day, and the best mark is so 14.57 meters, and that is Darius Weathers of Wingate, 47.9 and three quarters of an inch. Sprinters here from all over the country enjoying the high altitude of Pueblo. Pueblo sitting at 4,690 feet. So as the sprinters from sea level institutions come and compete in Pueblo, the air just a little bit thinner up here, so they all hoping for season best times in their sprints and as we see a little bit later the distance runners not so happy with having to perform at nationals but there you see the field for heat two arona alcazar in two arsenault in three wilson in four Payne in five epps in six fields in seven and perry in lane eight top two will qualify automatically And another clean start. And quickly making the stagger up in lane seven. That's Ayana Fields, Kaya Epps in lane six. And they will be the two first off the curve. Fields again, the top seed in this heat. And it is Ayana Fields, the junior from Cal Poly. Pomona, and she will be first across the line in heat number two. She'll clock in at 22.91 plus 5.2 on the wind, so the wind even gustier for heat number two. Arsenault from Colorado Mesa will take the automatic qualifying spot. Third place will go to Epps at 23.46, and that will put Epps into the final time qualifier. So as we've now completed two of our three heats, our top two are automatically in. Tanaya Looney at 23.10, Leah Graybill at 23.46, and Kaya Epps at 23.46, sitting on the bubble for the fastest qualifying times. Now you'll see the lane assignments for heat number three. Aisha Drake of UAH is in lane two. Leah Belfield of West Texas A&M in three. Nyanis Kerr of Augustana in four. Michaela Jackson of Minnesota State in five. Alexis White of CSU San Bernardino will be in lane six. Alexis Brown of Lenore Rhine in seven. Denisha Cartwright of Minnesota State in eight. And DeAndre Green of West Texas A&M. She'll be in the lane nine. Fastest qualifier and the top seed in this heat, Alexis Brown, the freshman from Lenore Rhine. She's run 23-11 this season. Also in this heat, Denisha Cartwright one of the better hurdlers slash 100 meter runners in the NCAA Division II, seven time conference champion from the Northern Sun Conference. 
and she is running both the 100, the 200, and the hurdles. She was the 22 state or national champion in the 100 hurdles and the 4 by 100 meter relay. Indoors, she was third place in the 60 meter hurdles. She was fourth in this race last year at 23.55. That is Denisha Cartwright. Again, top seeds randomly drawing those outside lanes, but we'll keep an eye on Brown in seven and Cartwright in eight. On the screen now, you do see the men's triple jump has started its competition. They are still early in the competition. First round of the first flight, again with the weather delay. Afternoon field events getting started a couple hours behind schedule. But we will bring you all the results of our afternoon and evening field events at the conclusion of today's meet. Back on the track, this is Heat 3 of our women's 200-meter dash. Top two automatically qualifying for the finals scheduled for tomorrow at 7.45. And a clean start. And again, you see on the outside, quickly making up the stagger, that is Denisha Cartwright from Minnesota State. On the outside, just inside of her, Alexis Brown of Lenore Ryan. And the two favorites taking advantage of that tailwind. And that will be Cartwright, the junior from Minnesota State, taking the honors for the heat, 22-91, Brown, will be 23.06. Now we'll check these next times. 23.57 for DeAndre Green. And 23.57 is not going to be fast enough to advance to the finals. So the top two heat winners in each heat advancing to the finals, along with Tanaya Looney of Pittsburgh State, Leah Graybill of Shippensburg, and Kaya Epps of Walsh will take the final qualifying spot to tomorrow's finals at 7.45. Our next event will be the men's 200 meters. And meanwhile, we'll take another look at that men's triple jump competition. Again, they are still in the first round or the first flight. Our current leader, Terrace Jackson of Missouri Southern but again, just one jump into the first flight, but Jackson with a mark of 1480. Men's triple jump underway, and as you see the start of our 200 meters, the women's high jump apron next to the start of that 200 meters. So our evening field events continuing. The men's decathlete are just throwing the javelin and the men's discus also underway south of the track in our throwing venues. This is Darius Weathers from Wingate. And a clean jump. You see the white flag there for Weathers from Wingate. That was his second jump in the first flight. Twenty-one different events competed each for the men's and the women's competition in our current format. And as we get closer to more and more events finishing up, we'll try and keep you up to date with all of our team scores. So far, we have just scored five women's events and four men's events are final. By the end of the night, that ought to be about eight and eight. So we'll have a little bit more of an idea of who the favorites are in the team competition. Tonight we are mainly having more preliminary events. We'll have the 200 preliminaries, then we'll have preliminaries in the men's and women's 800, the men's and women's 100 and 110 meter hurdles, the four by 400 meter relays, and of course the finals in the women's and the men's steeplechase will be this evening, and we'll have that 1500 from the decathlon on the runway you see keegan zach of lewis with his second jump in the men's triple jump 
And a clean jump for Zach. Of course, you can get online and see live scoring throughout the weekend of all the championships. We'll show you all the events on the track live as they are happening. And we will have recaps of our field events. On the runway now, Rahan Ricketts, the freshman from Benedict, taking his second jump, currently sitting in fourth place. This is the first flight, second jump. And a clean jump for Ricketts. And it's a busy day here in Big Two of the championships, so we'll keep rolling around here. The next event on the track is the men's 200 meter dash prelim. Again, we're going to advance nine to the final tomorrow across three. On the runway now, so Harris Jackson from Missouri Southern in the triple jump. The record in this event is 20.15 seconds held by Brian Bridgewater of Cal State LA. The all-time Division II record slightly faster than that, 20.13 held by Benjamin. And you see the red flag meaning a foul for Terrace Jackson in his second jump. One of three here in the men's 200, in lane two from Harding, the great American champ, and then indoor All-American in the 60, Dakari Bush. In lane three from West Texas A&M, he was fifth in the Lone Star, and the one of the five Buffaloes we'll see in the field star of the buff, Jerry Joshua. In lane four from Finley, the GMAC champion in the 200 and the school record holder for the Oilers, Josh Erhoff. In lane five from Alabama, Huntsville, the golf class champion. And indoor All-American in 200, Michael Gizzi. In lane six. Kevin Washington from Lubbock Christian on the triple jump runway. For West Texas A&M, Isaac Baccio. In lane seven from Cal State LA, the CCA champion at 200. And an outdoor All-American at 400 meters last year, Leon Kefir and Nika. And a clean jump for Washington. Okay, looks like we are just about ready for our first heat in the men's 200-meter dash. Again, top two will automatically advance. In heat one, we'll see Dakari Bush of Harding. He's in lane two. He had a fast qualifying time in yesterday's 100 meters. Jerry Jopka of West Texas A&M in three. Josh Verhoff from Findlay will be in lane four. Michael Gizzi of Alabama Huntsville will be in five. Isaac Bozio of West Texas A&M in six. Leon Tafranica from Cal State LA in seven. Wydard Gravel of Tiffin in lane eight. And Justice Mendoza of UCCS. He'll be in lane nine. First of three heats in our men's 200 meters. They are taking their marks. athlete to watch in this heat, Michael Gizzi from Alabama Huntsville. He is in lane five. He was seventh in this race last year, but he does come in with the second fastest qualifying time. And you can see in the middle of the track with the white on blue, that is Gizzi from Alabama Huntsville, lane five. Fastest qualifying time. Moving up out inside of him, that's Josh Verhoff from Finley. And that's one of the closest finishes we have today. It looks like coming up on the outside, that was Josh Verhoff. He's actually going to take the first heat in 2041 out of lane four. Isaac Bazio coming up in lane six. Looked like he may have outleaned Verhoff, but he'll take second at 2042. Gizzi will fade to third, so he'll sit at 20.46. You can see Justice Mendoza, 2054, and Richard Wervel, 20.70. He'll sit on that bubble. And, of course, if you were watching last night, Wervel with a false start in the 100 meters and now precariously on the edge of qualifying in this 200 meters. Plus 2.7 on the wind, so less tailwind 
for the men than the women had, but still above the limit of a plus 2.0, men's 2.7. In lane three from Pittsburgh State, second in the MIAA 200, and he was an indoor All-American this year at 60 meters, Xavier Carmichael. In lane four from Adam St. the Armand. On that triple jump, you see Darius Weathers of Wingate. He is the current leader in the first flight, getting ready for his third jump and getting the crowd going with that slow clap out there. Darius Weathers of Wingate on the runway. lane six from Lincoln, the MIAA champion in the 200, a five-time All-American here, Ruben Nichols. To his outside from Lenore Ryan, the South Atlantic champion at 200 and the school record holder for the Bears, Dario McCow. His teammate in the lane eight, the third in the South Atlantic, and I believe they're tied actually for the school record. If my and a foul in the triple jump for Wingate. And in lane nine from Central Missouri, the outdoor qualifier last year in the one and the two, and the school record holder for the Mules, Antonio Lay. On the runway in the triple jump, Keegan Zach of Lewis currently sitting in seventh position. Getting back to the track now, here are the lineups for the second heat. Here are your lane assignments. Number two, Justin Burnett of Mount Olive. In three, Xavier Carmichael from Pitt State. Lane four, Jonah Vigil from Adams State. Lane five, Kurt Modest from Limestone. Lane six, Ruben Nichols from Lincoln. Lane seven, Dario Mattel from Lenore Rhine. Lane eight, Trent Davis from Lenore Rhine. And in lane nine, Antonio Lay from Central Missouri. Mattel, the third fastest qualifying time this season at 20.59. He was your silver medalist in the indoor 200 meters. So he will be in lane seven. And again on the outside, keep an eye on Antonio Lay of Central Missouri. The Mules run 20.63 this season. E2, ready on the track. And a clean start for us, heat number two. That is Mattel of Lenore Rhine, but moving up on the inside, but leasing up. Remember, they just needed to be in the top two to advance. Mattel will take the heat at 2048. That was Kirk Modest from Limestone letting up just a bit at the end at 20.63. Nichols runs 20.64, Carmichael 20.68, and Davis will run 20.89. So now as two heats are complete, we have our four automatic qualifiers, and Gizzy sits with the fastest non-qualifying time at 20.46, Mendoza at 20.54, and Ruben Nichols of Lincoln now Firmly on the bubble at 2064, nervously hoping to see if he can make the finals or not. Plus 3.7 on the wind for that last heat. Last night we did run our sprint events from south to north as we had a wind tailwind from the south. And today's wind has completely turned around and is now blowing from the north down into the south. Number two all time at West Texas AM, Jeremiah Lozon. In lane three from Carson Newman, the indoor champion in the 200. Third in this event outdoors last year, he's a four time All American, Makanakashi Shiramba. In four. Following our men's 200 meter heat number three, we'll move into the qualifying for the 800 meters. First the women, then the men. And you can f hear a slight buzz in the crowd as they get excited for these 800-meter runs. We are here on the campus of CSU Pueblo in Pueblo, Colorado. 
And the Thunderwolves with representatives in both the women's and the men's 800. So the hometown favorites coming up in races that you won't want to miss the 800 meters for both the women and the men qualifying. But we still have one heat of the men's 200. Men's 200 meter finals scheduled to go at 7.55 tomorrow. And you're looking at the end of the first flight in the men's triple jump. So they will have the second flight getting ready. And we'll try and keep you up to date, but also don't be afraid to get into the live scoring. You can see the live marks as they happen if you are following any of our field events. The women's high jump competition is now underway. And in our throwing venues, you have the men's discus and the men's decathlon javelin competition still underway. We're looking forward to the end of the decathlon. Men's 1500 meters. Still don't have an official time start for that decathlon 1500. But right now you're looking at heat three of the men's 200 meters. We have Jeremiah Lauzon of West Texas A&M in two. Charamba of Carson Newman will be in three. Sansing of West Texas A&M in four. Sanders of Pitt State in five. Landrum of Fort Hayes in six. Walter of Catawba in seven. Moore of Carson Newman in eight. And Joseph Manu of West Texas A&M. He'll be outside in lane nine. Lane two, Sharamba, fastest qualifying time this year, 20.44. He was also your indoor champion in the men's 200. That's him in the orange on blue in lane two. And now Sharamba taking charge in the latter part of this race. The indoor champion will have the fastest qualifying time this evening, 20.32. And the win down to plus 2.4. Landrum, 20.67. So... The senior from Fort Hayes State will automatically advance. Walter from Catawba is going to be 20.81, but that is not going to be enough to get into the top three non-place qualifiers. So top two in each heater in, and where we'll be joined by Michael Gizzi of Alabama Huntsville, Justice Mendoza of UCCS, and Ruben Nichols of Lincoln. He'll take the last time qualifier at 20.64 and that will wrap up the men's 200 meters the next event on the track will be the women's 800 Women's 800 actually scheduled for a 6.25 start, so that will be a, about six minutes away. Many athletes here not just seeking national championships, which go to so few, just 42 national champions will walk away from this meet, but athletes here competing possibly for the last time this season, hoping to get a season best mark, while many athletes hoping to qualify for their respective national championships or even national teams. With the world championship scheduled in August in Budapest, Hungary, many of these athletes hoping to be representing their countries at the world championships. The USA Track and Field Championships are in Eugene this year, July 6th through 9. So the Americans in the competition here this week also hoping for qualifying times for the USA Track and Field Championships. 
This is the women's high jump now, taking a quick peek at the women's high jump. They have just begun competition. Looks like we did have 16 athletes clear opening height with a couple passing. So the bar currently at 1 meter 65, that's 5 feet 5 inches. And that was Taylor Nellums of West Texas A&M. She may have been the first jumper at this height. Kara Carter of Tiffin. Now getting ready for her approach in that women's high jump. Once again, we did have a brief weather delay this afternoon. It did come at the best time for competition in a break between the morning and the afternoon and evening field events and our running events on the track. Just delayed 25 minutes. Some of the field events taking a bit longer of a delay, but all of our field events should be now underway. Our throwing venues located just south of the track here, the men's discus and the men's javelin decathlon underway. And here on the inside of the stadium, the men's triple jump, the women's high jump competitions underway. Looks like the women are just about ready to begin the 800 meters. Again, we will have three heats in our women's 800 meters, qualifying the top two in each heat, plus the next three fastest times. The 800 meters has become somewhat more of a fast speed event. The middle distance 800 and 1500 traditionally qualifying out of two heats and waterfall starts now beginning in lanes and going to the 800 going to three heats qualifying just the two top runners in each heat. The women's 800 meters Finals will be tomorrow night at 6.55. So the athletes who do advance in our women's 800 have just about 24 hours to get ready for their competition. And you see the first heat underway. This is Jesse Jacobusi from Michigan Tech, Luz Mercado from San Marcos, Isabel Marsh from Adelphi, Ariel Wright from Colorado School of Mines, Portia Eisman from CUI, Yukivia Beckwith from Embry Riddle, and Berseda Garcia Mesa from Azusa Pacific. First of three heats on the track. Top two will automatically advance. And they'll have that wind hitting them in the face down the back stretch. But as they go around the north curve and head down the home stretch here, that wind will be behind them. For the latter part of the race. That is hip number five. So that is Ariel Wright from the Colorado School of Mines. She will set the pace, and as they come through the first 400 meters, just about 61.5 on the track for the first 400 meters with the goal of being in the top two. Those top two will automatically qualify, so they'll be well aware of where they are on the track. It's that third and fourth place runners that will need to kick it in down the home stretch to make sure their times are enough to get them in with the next three fastest times. But... It is clear that Ariel Wright and Yukivia Beckwith of Embry-Riddle have gone out with the idea of not worrying about the time, but qualifying by place. Beckwith from Embry-Riddle, 2.04.59. So she has the fastest qualifying time, and she got that just a couple weeks ago at the last chance meet. She runs 2.04.59. She'll enjoy running by that high jump apron, as she is also an experienced high jumper. But you can see the top two, they can relax just a little bit down the stretch here knowing that they are going to get the automatic qualifying spots. 
Ariel Wright of Mines, Eukavia Beckwith of Embry Riddle. They will take the top two spots. 210.84 for Wright, 211.29 for Beckwith, and Isabel Marsh of Adelphi, 213.20, and along with Mercado and Portia Iceman from CUI, she'll be on the bubble at 215.71. That was the first of three heats in the women's 800 meters. And as you are looking at the results on your screen, you can also see the current team scores. Again, not too many events are complete on the women's side on the right hand of your screen. Just five of 21 events are complete, but Grand Valley State out to the early lead for the teams along with Millersville. Millersville buoyed by a first place in the women's discus. And on the men's side, just four events are complete. Pittsburgh State with the early lead at 16. They are your defending team champions, so off to a good start. Missouri Southern with 14, currently second. Women's high jump. You see Erica Shamil from Pitt State on her approach. And a clearance for Shamil, the junior from Pitt State. The bar is at 1 meter 65. That's 5 feet 5 inches, and she is actually the first jumper over that height, so temporarily into the lead. The high jump located on the north apron here at the Thunder Bowl, and it is an open bowl, so the wind is going to be affecting that high jump a little bit. You can see the goalpost, the top of the goalpost with the orange flags waving in the wind. And there we will see another clearance in that women's high jump. That is Paola Brenna of St. Cloud State. So still in the first jumps, first attempts at this height, but just two jumpers over. And now we will see Josie Coffey from Colorado Mesa. And a clearance for Coffey. So three athletes over on their first attempt at 1 meter 65. And there you see heat number two underway in our women's 800. Alasia Brooks from Ursuline of Ohio. She's in three. Megan Roxby of Simon Fraser in four. Rika Hoogstein from Adams State in five. Josie Johnson of Westminster. Mackenzie Duck of Colorado School of Mines. And Bailey Blake of Northwest Missouri on the outside. And as they break, that is Lika Hoogstein, the freshman from Adams State, moving up on the outside. And they will be tightly packed as they run into that wind down the back straight. This is heat two of three. And that is Josie Johnson of Westminster. She's run 207.13 this season. She will take charge of the pace and bring them through at about 63. So a slower first 400 meters for heat number two. They do have the advantage of knowing that the time they have to beat on the track to get in by time qualifying, but they will all be aware that their first 400 meters was slower than heat one. And following him from Pittsburgh State is the indoor champion of the triple jump, the school record holder for Pitt State, that's L.J. Kiner. Then from Harvard, the indoor All-American in the triple jump, Yvonne Yves-Delon. 
And as they come off the curve for the final time, the charge for the top two, Josie Johnson of Westminster, Mackenzie Duck of the Colorado School of Mines. So it is the two athletes who spend their time competing at a higher elevation. They take advantage of it in this second heat. They will get the qualifying places. Johnson, 210.04. Duck at 210.72. Bailey Blake from Northwest Missouri will run 212.30. Roxby, 212.93. Brooks will fade to third at 217.01. So with two heats in the book, the three fastest qualifiers by time are Blake, Roxby, and Isabel Marsh out of our first heat at 213.20. So if you want to make the finals now out of heat three, you need to be first or second, or you need to be 212.30 to make sure that you are advancing to the final. Quick look back at the women's high jump for Talia Ferguson from yeah, Felician. That was her second attempt at 1 meter 65, 5 feet 5 inches. We are now into the second jump at this height with five athletes clearing 1 meter 65 so far in competition. This is Valerie Daler of Wingate, second attempt. And so that mark does go through there for Pape Clay Woodley. And a clearance there for Daler. 53 feet even, so he now leads the field by more than a meter. Next man on the runway there was Jermel Jones the second, who was the runner up in the long jump last night. Jumped a new person of us 8.10 in the long. And they are just about ready for our third and final heat in this women's 800 meters. And wrapping up that high jump, you see Allery Libatore from Pitt State with a clearance. Heat three for the women's 800. And they are off. Kaylee Harp of Northwest Missouri running in the inside in lane two. Lane three, that's Helen Braybrook from CSU Pueblo. She was second in this race indoors. She ran 207 indoors last year, running on her home track. Marianne Ledesma of Western Washington Jessica Simon of Adams State, Lainey Williams of Southwest Baptist, Maggie Williams of Biola, and Taryn Chapko of Grand Valley State. But as they come off that curve for the first time, you can see that she's not wasting any time. Helen Braybrook, the sophomore from England. She's out of Freeston, United Kingdom, running for Colorado State University Pueblo, setting a school record indoors during the distance medley relay, where they were the indoor champions. She ran the 1600 meter leg, but she enjoys running the 800 outside, showing her foot speed, and she is clear down the backstretch with the pack chasing. Again, the top two times will automatically, or top two places will automatically advance. And then the magic times to beat 212.30 is the first non-time qualifier. So the field coming back on Braybrook just a little bit as they get to the top of the curve. We will see if the excitement of running on her home track caused her to go out a little hard. 
100 meters to go. Top two will automatically qualify. So coming off the curve, this is Braybrook from CSU Pueblo. And that is Marian Ledesma, the junior from Western Washington, currently in second position. Top two will automatically qualify and a sub 210 time for Braybrook. So she will have the fastest qualifying time at 209.35. Ledesma will take second at 210.57. Harp will finish third at 211.49. Chopko, 211.60. And Simons, 212.50. Will that be enough to get her in? And no, Simon will not advance. So the top three qualifiers by time will be Kaylee Harp of Northwest Missouri, Taryn Chapko of Grand Valley State out of that last heat, and Bailey Blake from Northwest Missouri at 2.12.30 will be the final qualifier for our women's 800 meters. As we get ready for the men, we'll go back to that women's high jump competition. The bar is still at... One meter 65, that's five feet, five inches. We now have 13 athletes over this height. And we are on our third and final jumps at this height. And we'll continue to keep the action going around the track here in the next event. The three women are the men's 800 meters like the women. It's going to be three heats here in order to advance nine to final. So that means the top two in each heat and, and then three on time. The meet record is 146.56 held by the man from this institution, Thomas Sainz, CSU Pueblo. Well, I don't think we're going to see that in the prelims here, but your lane assignment in heat one. In lane three from Lee, Tennessee, the golf South champion at 800 and an indoor finalist at 800, Titus Lagat. In lane four from Oklahoma, Christian, the lone star runner-up and an indoor All-American at 800, Dylan Burrow. In lane five from Cal Poly Humboldt, the CCA runner-up and number two all-time for Cal Final Poly. jump for Talia Ferguson of Felician. Four all time for the Thunderwolves, Caleb Timpton in lane seven for Northwood, an indoor qualifier in the DMR and the school record holder there for the Wolves, Josh Jones. And on the outside of the track in lane eight from Nebraska Kearney, the defending NCAA outdoor champion, the 23 NCAA indoor runner up, Wes Ferguson. And there on your track, you see the first heat of three in our men's 800. Again, top two will automatically advance. Men's 800, gun is up. From the inside out, Titus Legat from Lee, Dylan Burrows from Oklahoma Christian, Aris Valerio from Cal Poly Humboldt, Caleb Tipton from CSU Pueblo, Josh Jones from Northwood, and Wes Ferguson from Nebraska Kearney. Ferguson is our defending champion, the five-time All-American from Nebraska Kearney. That is him in the lead at the break in the dark blue on black, Wes Ferguson of Nebraska Kearney. Currently sitting in second place on the shoulder, that is Caleb Tipton, the sophomore from CSU Pueblo, and now moving up on his right, Dylan Burrows from Oklahoma Christian. And they will come through that first 400 meters, 5504. Again, the whole goal in the preliminaries is to finish in the top two or to run your best third place, fourth place, fifth place time and hope that you can get in by time. On the back stretch, Ferguson, Tipton, and Burroughs. Burroughs now challenging the lead. And it's going to be a battle three wide, only two automatic qualifying spots. Tipton of CSU Pueblo with a charge. Alyssa Ferrellero of Cal Poly. He's going to move up into that third position. But it is going to be Wes Ferguson from Nebraska Kearney. The defending champion will make a statement with his 149.75. Caleb Tipton on his home track. He'll advance 150.31. 
Valerio 150 99. Burroughs will fall to 151 16. Titus Legat finishing fifth place in that first heat, so he will be on the bubble at 152 72. First of three heats in our men's 800 meters. And you're seeing the men's triple jump competition. They are currently in the second round of the second flight. Our overall leader currently in the men's triple jump, Papai Glaiwulu from Adam State. His mark of 16 meters 15, that's 53 feet even. He is our leader currently in this men's triple jump, but they are just getting underway in flight number two. And you are looking at Jermel Jones from Azusa Pacific. And you're seeing heat number two in our men's 800 meters from the inside out. Scott Spanstra of Grand Valley State. Ben Summer from Azusa Pacific. Vitare Ruggenera from West Texas A&M. Tanner Meyer from Minnesota State. Drew Weber from Western Washington. And Harry Ross Hughes from Lake Erie. And that is Harry Ross Hughes from Lake Erie, the freshman starting on the outside and at the break moving well into the lead. And now with the wind at his back, he is going to be the leader at the 400 meter mark, 53.9. So just about the same time as the first heat, maybe just a bit quicker as they come through the forced 400. Ross Hughes of Lake Erie hanging on now as they run around the south curve for the final time and 300 meters to go. And there you see the pack catching up. Again, the top two will automatically get in they will like to relax coming down this last curve in the men's 800 prelims, but not when you've got five people up there in contention. The top two are the ones that want to cross that line first. They'll get the automatic spot. Ross Hughes hanging on. Here comes Ruggenera. And those are going to be your top two qualifiers, so... The favorite, Batari Ruggenera, he comes from the back to win the heat, 149.72. Harry Ross Hughes will run from the front, and he'll hang on. The freshman from Lake Erie, 149.74. Meyer will be 150.31. Sumner at 150.86. And Weber at 151.25 will not advance. So one heat to go, our three times on the bubble will be 150-31 Tanner Meyer, 150-86 Ben Summer, and 150-99 Aris Valerio from Cal Poly Humboldt. As we get ready for our third and final heat on the track for the men's 800 meters. We'll go back to the triple jump and see how our competition is going in the men's triple jump. We are in flight number two, second jump. 
during the time of 212. Second jumps in flight number two for the men's triple jump. And that looks like Yves Belong of Harding on the runway for his second jump. He's currently sitting in third position with his first round jump of 1546. Three athletes over 50 feet so far in the preliminary competition. And this is Belong from Harding. And you see the red flag go up on that triple jump marking a foul. Triple jumpers also having to adjust their steps a little bit for this wind, which has turned into a bit of a crosswind. Now it looks like the wind, the flags are blowing from east to west. And of course, in a bowl stadium such as this, that does create a bit of a swirl. Looking at the wind readings for most of our triple jump marks, they are hovering right around that 2.0, 2.5 wind reading. On the track now, you see heat three. And from the inside out, Braxton Brewer from Minnesota State Moorhead, Trevor Medina from Fort Hayes, Reese Sharman Newell from CSU Pueblo, Shannon Turner from Cal State LA, Angel Lara from Dallas Baptist, and Nick Melanese from San Marcos. The record in this men's 800 meter run set in 2018 by Thomas Staines of CSU Pueblo. Staines and representing the UK internationally and head coach Matt Morris recruiting the United Kingdom for what he has found some gems in the 800 meter run. This is Rhys Sharman Newell, also from England. He was fourth indoors in this event at 148.82. And he does have the second fastest qualifying time coming into today's event at the Brian Clay meet in April running 145.56. And that is him on the outside there and now t taking the lead, Reese Sharman Newell from CSU Pueblo. He will take them around the north curve looking for those top two qualifying spots. He's Trevor Medina of Fort Hayes currently coming off the curve in second, but that is Angel Luera from Dallas Baptist making a move to second. But Sharman Newell, he'll take the heat. And the automatic qualifying spot at 150.33. Luera from Dallas Baptist, 150.66. So Brewer, 151.22. And that will not be enough to get in. So our three non-top two qualifiers, qualifiers by time will go to Tanner Meyer of Minnesota State, Ben Summer of Azusa Pacific, and Aris Valerio from Cal Poly Humboldt at 150.99 will advance to the finals. They are scheduled for 7.05 tomorrow evening, Mountain Time. On the track, our next event will be the women's 100 meter hurdles, scheduled for seven o'clock. So we are just about 10 minutes away. And as they are setting up the hurdles on the track, we will be running from south to north here on the home stretch and it does look right now that'll be a bit of a crosswind but that is about 10 minutes away so looks like we're going to go back and look at the men's triple jump competition we are now in the third jump of the second flight 
And then on time, joining them in the field, Eric Valerio of Cal Poly Humboldt, Ben Sumner of Azusa Pacific, and Tanner Mayer of Minnesota State all make the final. And you're getting a nice angle of the men's triple jump competition from our high camera in the south north end of the bowl. Most of us used to seeing the triple jump from the side, but you can really see from this angle that to get your optimum distance, triple jumpers are really trying to keep a straight line down the runway and the athletes that you do see with a little bit of horizontal motion on that runway losing some often valuable inches or even centimeters to their jumps as Dakota Abbott is on the runway here in round three of flight. Dakota two. Abbott of UCCS. And you can see the balance that they have. A clean jump. The roar of support there from the mountain line. And the crowd seems very happy with that jump. Dakota Abbott currently sitting in ninth position. So he is right on that bubble advancing to the finals. So he'll be hoping for a big improvement with that last jump that you saw. And it will be an improvement, 15 meters 26, so that will move Abbott up into fifth position with his final jump, so he will be advancing to the finals. And it looks like our men's decathlon 1500 is underway. We weren't really sure when that was going to happen on the track, but we are now underway in our men's decathlon 1500. And you can see they are approaching the 400 meter mark. This is the men's decathlon 1500. So as we head into this final event, Elvis Kriakov of Angelo State, he's our overall decathlon leader. Aaron Worrell of Azusa Pacific is second. Hunter Jones of Pitt State is third. And as they run this 1500 meter run, Thorben Host of UCCS leading him around the first 400 meters on the track. Gerard Bryant of West Texas A&M second on the track. Nolan Churchman of Fort Hayes. So again, looking at the overall standings, Elvis Kriakoff of Angelo State with a 213 point lead over Aaron Worrell of Azusa Pacific. 295 point lead over Hunter Jones of Pittsburgh. Dawson Heidi, our early leader from Colorado Mesa, he is currently sitting in fourth position at 6,716 points. So this men's 1500 will wrap up the decathlon, and it does not look like we will have too much change in the standings. And you can see the pack look like they're strolling, believe me, for these decathletes running this 1500 is not an easy feat by any means, but they know the times that they need to get to either get an improvement in their overall decathlon time or if there is to be any place changing. But this is Thorben Hast of UCCS, your leader on the track. And he overall is currently in 12th position, but hoping to salvage a good two-day multi-event 
with a strong finish in this 1500 meters. So Hast, the sophomore from UCCS, on his bell lap, 3.10 on the clock. He's on his final lap. He's got nearly a 100-meter lead. And we'll see these athletes in their 10th event over two days with a long delay. Men's pole vault in the decathlon today taking between three and four hours to complete. And then we did have the weather delay just as they were starting their javelin throw. So it has been a long two days of competition. Stefan Youngmichael of Biola, second on the track. Kyle Lumpkins of Angelo State. So none of our overall leaders, they are sitting back in the pack, comfortable in knowing that their times are not going to create too much change. At the top of the curve there, though, you see Thorben Haast of UCCS. He is going to make the best of his two-day competition. Overall, not a finish that he will be happy with, but he will take heart knowing that he will win this men's decathlon 1500. Decathlon 1500 meter run. Host, Thorben Host, the sophomore from UCCS, he's going to run 429.40. That's worth 749 points to add to his total. And as you see, the rest of the finishers now coming to the line. Stefan Youngmichael of Biola, second. Kyle Lumpkins of Angelo State, third. And there you see our overall leaders making their way to the finish line. And you can also see the hurdles being set up for our women's hurdle qualifying. You're looking at Elvis Kroyakov from Angelo State laying on the finish line there. He is the overall leader. There you see the results of our decathlon 1500 meter run, just one heat. Kroyakov, the overall leader, looks like he's gonna have a time of 5.04.53. And we will see our decathletes on the award stand a little bit later. But as we mentioned, no big changes at the top of the leaderboard after that men's 1500. And there you see the overall result, 76-78 for Kroyakov of Angelo State. He is going to win this men's decathlon. Borel of Azusa Pacific will be Silver. Jones of Pittsburgh State taking the bronze. And there you see the point totals for the top 13 athletes, those who finished this two-day event, the men's decathlon. And we're just hearing our PA announce that Kroyakov and Worrell, the top two finishers with personal bests at 76, 78, 75, 04. And there you see the first heat of our next event on the track. It'll be the women's 100 meter hurdles. We will have three heats. And as always, qualifying the top two from each heat and the next three fastest times. You're looking at Aisha Carrington of Lincoln. She will be in lane two. That's Mauricia Spence of Angelo State in lane three. Leighton Greeson of West Texas A&M will be in four. 
Kiara Smith of Missouri Southern in five, Jeanette Allison of Lincoln in six, Maddie Rossi from Fort Hayes State will be in seven, lane eight, Jayla Walker from Azusa Pacific, and in lane nine, Kennedy Malone from Minnesota State. This is the women's 100 meter hurdles. Favorite in this heat is in lane five, Kiara Smith of Missouri Southern. She was sixth in this race last year. She's run 13.22 this year, which is the third fastest qualifying time. So looking for the favorite coming out of lane five in this first heat. You can see there on your screen the shadows on this part of the track. And if you can picture the finish line just 100 meters away, the same shadows running across the finish line. So we hope that won't be a problem at all for our cameras at the finish line. The top two will advance with the next three fastest times. Every one hundredth of a second may count in qualifying for the finals. But this is heat number one on the track, now taking their blocks. Again, keep your eye on lane five. Kara Smith from Missouri Southern. She's run 13.22 this year. And a clean start in this first heat of the 100 meter hurdles. And that is Kiara Smith in the middle of the track. And she will be first across the line taking heat number one. Smith running 1337. The wind at just a 1.2 reading. Jayla Walker of Azusa Pacific will be second at 1365. Malone 1382. Allison at 13.98, Rossi at 14.10. So they will be the three on the bubble with two heats to come. Just a 1.2 plus 1.2 reading on the wind in this heat. So wind doesn't really appear to have died so much, but it does look like a crosswind now coming from east to west. There you see the women in heat number two setting their blocks from the inside out. That's Denisha Cartwright from Minnesota State. She is our fastest qualifier. She has run 13 flat this year. She is the defending champion in this event. That is her in lane two, coming out of her blocks in a practice run. In lane three will be Nicole Warwick of Azusa Pacific, Sophia Myers of Lincoln in four, Roxanne Foster of Minnesota State in five, Raja Andrews of Tiffin in six, Marie Jean Oriega of the Academy of Art in seven, and Susie Fowler from Cal Poly Pomona. She will be in lane nine. Back to our high jump competition. The bar is currently at one meter 71. That is five, seven and a quarter inch. And so far just one jumper over one meter 71.
Heat 2 you see on the track now, again from the inside out. Cartwright, Warwick is looks to be a scratch. Myers, Foster, Andrews, Oriega, and Fowler. And a long hold for heat number two, but a clean start. And in lane two, Denisha Cartwright, the junior from Minnesota State. She's run 13 flat this year, so she'll be very happy with this preliminary qualifying. 13.15 for Cartwright. Myers of Lincoln, 13.70. And with Andrews, Foster, and Oriega hoping to qualify by time from heat number two. And it will only be Foster with a time of 13.98 with a chance of qualifying. So two heats done, one to go. And the times to beat for qualifying will be 13.81 for Andrews. Malone's at 13.82 and Foster on the bubble at 13.98. So it's going to take sub 1398 to advance to the finals unless you win this final heat on the track. Women's high jump, we are looking at one meter 71. That's five, seven and a quarter of an inch. Three, three athletes are over this height. And we'll make that four with Beyonce Kelly from California, Pennsylvania clearing. And you see, taking their marks in the box, Heat 3 from the inside out, Patrice Clark of New Mexico Highlands, Esther Conde Turpin, the fastest freshman in the field from Azusa Pacific, Lauren Chandler from Central Washington, Brooke Barkasi from Grand Valley State, Cheyenne Williamson from Saginaw Valley, Missy Moraney of UCCS, and Melody Jones from Lenore Rhine in lane 8. In lane six, that is Cheyenne Williamson from Saginaw Valley. She's our heptathlon champion this year at the national championships. So taking advantage of one of her strengths, the 100 meter hurdles, she is hoping to make the finals in that race as well. Conde Turpin in lane three from Azusa Pacific, also with a fast qualifying time. And that will be Conde Turpin First across at 13.48. Williamson will advance to the finals with a 13.59. Brooke Barkasi at 13.68. She's going to get in on time. And Missy Moraney, 13.75. She's going to get in on time. And they're going to bump Rajai Andrews of Tiffin down to the final qualifying spot. So top two were in. Barkasi and Moraney out of heat three. And Raja Andrews. 1381 will take the final qualifying spot by time. Back to the women's high jump competition. And just 
wrapping up the final jumps at this height of one meters 71. In fourth by Grayson of a great 1,500 meters to 7,280 from Biola, Stefan Young Michael. In third, the man from Pittsburgh State, 7,390. And you can see the podium finish now for our men's decathlon. And your 2023 champion with a new personal best of 7,678 points from Angelo Self. Hey, sorry, Elvis Kryakov. Elvis Kryakov of Angelo State, the winner of the men's decathlon, 10 events over the two days. We'll have a bit of a recap later in the show, but a personal best, 7,678 points for Kryakov. Aaron Worrell of Azusa Pacific. Also over 7,500, he'll finish with 7,504 points today at men's decathlon. On the clock time, a very long two days with a pole vault competition that took more than three hours and then another rain delay, lightning delay this afternoon. So it has been a very long day for those individuals on the podium. They will sleep well tonight. In lane three, you're going to want to watch this stage. The indoor champion, the all-time fastest man at 60 hurdles, and the D2 record holder in the 110 hurdles, Cordell Pooch. In lane four, from Lincoln, the MIAA runner-up in the 110s, and the three-time All-American, Troy White. In lane five, from Missouri Southern, he is a 23 NCAA indoor qualifier, 60 hurdles, and a two Back to the men's triple jump. We are now in the finals. Our leader is still Papai Glaiwulu from Adams State. He's got a mark of 16 meters 15 on his very first jump today. That was 53 feet even. We have five jumpers over the 50 foot mark. And you're looking at Dakota Abbott of UCCS. He's currently in fifth position. And a foul for Abbott. You see the red flag come up. That was the first jump in the finals and their fourth jump overall. Men's triple jump competition now into the finals. Top three seeds or top three finishers coming into the finals. Gaiwulu from Adam State, Nako from Academy of Art, and Lloyd McCurdy from Limestone sitting in the top three positions with three jumps remaining. And as we are getting ready to make our transition from the women's hurdles to the men's hurdles, the women's hurdles scheduled for a 5.55 start in the finals tomorrow evening. And we are just about ready for our men's hurdle preliminaries to begin. The men's finals will be scheduled for 6.05 tomorrow evening. There you see heat one in the blocks. Keep an eye on Cordell Tinch in a lane three. He's a sophomore at Pitt State, former division one runner at the University of Kansas. 
has not been competing for the past two years. So he's come back after a three-year layoff and just getting his skills sharpened. That is Cordell Tinch, the sophomore out of Pitt State, 13-21, 13-78 for Troy White from Lincoln. You can see the wind at just a plus 1.7 there. So Tinch and White will automatically advance. Martins, Fields, and Onoese from Cal Poly Pomona, they will be on the bubble from 1382 down to 1414. That was heat number one on the track. Cordell Tinch, the winner of the men's long jump competition yesterday. And that'll take us back to the triple jump men's triple jump competition in the finals. We are just wrapping up the fourth round and our final jumper you see Pape Guiawulu from Adams State the senior. He is our current leader in the competition at 53 feet even, 16 meters 15. This will be his first jump in the finals and you can see the Adam State Grizzly getting the crowd to support him with that slow clap. Our leader in the men's triple jump on the runway. And a clean jump, as you can see, he's on the left side of that runway during his approach, but by the time he landed into the sand, he was on the right side of the runway. So no athlete will want to be affected by the wind. The goal is to come down the runway just as straight as possible and get every centimeter out of your jump. So we'll go into round five with Gualulu of Adam State still the leader in the men's triple jump. Still have three events, three field events in competition here after our rain delay, a little bit late start, but the men's discus competition is underway and that venue is located just south of the stadium here. Men's triple jump you are seeing on your screen. They are now in round five and our women's high jump competition underway. Women's high jump still early in the competition. The bar is currently at one meter 74. That's five, eight and a half with no clearances so far at that height. Again, in this bowl stadium, it's tough to tell where the wind is swirling on the far southeast portion of the track. When we look up at the American flag on the North Bowl, it looks like the wind is coming straight from east to west, which would be a crosswind for our triple jumpers and a crosswind for our hurdlers. And there you see heat number two of the 110 meter hurdles in their blocks from the inside out. It's Casson of Lee, Bush of Harding, Dilly of New Haven, Reese from Puerto Rico, Marquez, Williams from Pitt State, Bartlett from Lincoln, and Lopez also from Puerto Rico, Mayaguez. And no clean start there. 
And we'll keep an eye on the start to see if that'll just be a warning to the field or if that was one athlete jumping. And you see the green card coming up, so that is just a warning to the field. And he's pointing back to the starter, maybe a misfire from the starter. So no disqualifications in heat number two, and they will stretch it out and stand by their blocks for a restart in this second heat. Classen, Bush, Deli, Reese, Williams, Bartlett, and Lopez. Fastest qualifier in this heat. He's on the inside in lane two. Kale Casson, the freshman from Lee. He has a 13.50. That is our second fastest qualifying time. Lee was fourth indoors in the 60 meter hurdles. So look for lane two to get a very quick start over the first half of this race. And a clean start this time. And that is Lee out quickly and Dalen Williams of Pitt State. And Lee and Williams will be the first two across the line to take the automatic qualifying spot. Kale Casson, the freshman from Lee, 1355. Davlin Williams from Pitt State, 1367. And as we look at the third place time of Edgardo Lopez, 1388. That is going to temporarily advance him to the finals. The three times on the bubble for our automatic qualifying will be Martins at 1382, Fields at 1384, and Lopez out of that second heat. He is at 1388. Women's high jump. She's everywhere. Cheyenne Williamson. She won the heptathlon today. She just advanced in the 100 meter hurdles. And now she is first over the bar at 1 meters 74. So Cheyenne Williamson from Saginaw Valley having a heck of a day here at the Division II National Championships in Pueblo, Colorado. You're looking at Taylor Nelliams from West Texas A&M, her second attempt at this height. And a miss there, but she will have one more attempt at 1 meters 74. So looking back at Cheyenne Williamson, she won the heptathlon, our two-day competition yesterday and today. She's advanced in the 100-meter hurdles, and she's currently leading the high jump competition as the first over the bar at 1 meters 74. Currently looking at Michaela Jones from CSU Pueblo, jumping on her home apron. And that'll be a miss for her. And again, Williamson just having a heck of a day in the heptathlon. And as we look back at her in the long jump, a nice mark for her in this sunny day, throwing the javelin. And a big throw for Williamson in the javelin up in the clouds. She may have started that rain. And then here she is finishing up the 800. She came from way back to finish. And she finished with 5,861 points. That's fourth all time for Cheyenne Williamson. And she is looking for a second podium finish tonight in that high jump. And it looks like heat number three of the men's 110 meter hurdles just about ready to start. Maxime and Drew Kikif from Missouri Southern will be on the inside in lane one. Joseph Santos of Assumption in two. William Gray of Limestone in three. Everett DeLott from Mines in four. Jaqueline Scott of Texas A&M Kingsville in five. Wilson McLean of Alabama 
Huntsville in six, T.J. Caldwell of Pitt State in seven, and Jeremiah Sims of Shorter in lane eight. Jaqueline Scott of Texas A&M Kingsville, he was third indoors, and he has the fastest qualifying time in this heat, so lane five will be your favorite. And not a good start for Scott out of lane five, but a nice finish. And he is going to be a second in that heat, I believe. And it is going to be Caldwell from Pitt State, 1366. So he will take the heat. Scott will take second at 1367, so he will advance. And now we'll look at the all-important third place times. Everett the Lot from the Colorado School of Mines, 1395. And that is not going to be enough to advance to the finals. So you see a 1.1 wind reading for Caldwell and Scott. They will be the only two out of Heat 3 to advance to the final. Our three fastest qualifiers by time are going to be Andrew Martins of Augustana, Ryan Fields of Cal Poly Pomona. Will be the fastest qualifiers. Tinch, 1321. That'll be the time to beat as we get ready for that men's hurdles finals. 6.05 tomorrow evening for the men's 110 meter hurdles. And we're going to take a look more at the high jump as the hurdles are being cleared. And the big barriers we brought out. The next event on the track scheduled for a 7.40 start mountain time. So that is just over 10 minutes from now. It'll be the finals of the women's steeplechase. And we are going to get ready for that steeplechase. Keep an eye on the high jump. But we're going to look at the women's discus competition from this afternoon. Hannah Wolfling from Millersville. Her first throw of competition, she threw 50 meters, 91. And there you see that was enough to hold up for the national championship. Hannah Wolfling, the only thrower over 50 meters. So she will be a national champion in the women's discus. Back to the women's high jump. Again, the bar is at 1 meter, 74. We now have two athletes over this height. Cheyenne Williamson from Saginaw Valley and Erica Harbo from Concordia St. Paul. The two jumpers over 1 meter 74. So it's been a crazy day with competition here. We started with beautiful weather for the early second day of the multi events. Then we went into a lightning and rain delay for a while this afternoon, so a bit of a late start this evening on the track and in the field events. We do still have some field events in competition. The men's discus being thrown outside the stadium here. And just looking at our leaderboard, we can see that Kaysen Brown of Angelo State is the leader through the first three rounds so as they are getting ready for the finals over in the men's discus brown of angelo state will be the leader after three throws our men's triple jump competition which we have been watching no change at the leaderboard they are now in the final jump in the men's triple jump and we are watching our women's high jumper as we are possibly through nope looks like we still have three more jumpers with their third and final attempts at 1 meters 74. So as you see these next few jumps, this is their final jump trying to stay in the competition. 1 meter 74, that is 5, 8 and a half. This is Erica Schemel from Pitt State. Her final attempt to stay in the competition. Will be the man from the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs. 
Dakota Abbott. This man has won a national title, and he did do it on his last jump when he did so. Let's see what he's got here. Ileana Saunders of Azusa Pacific asking for a slow clap at her final attempt at 1 meter 74. And our next jumper in the women's high jump, Paola Brenna from St. Cloud State. Her final attempt, just three athletes over the bar at 1 meter 74. Final attempt now for Paola Brenna of St. Cloud State. And here we go. Four jumps remaining. This is Ivan Spallone of Harding. Spallone currently in sixth. And you can see in that women's high jump competition now, they will be raising the bar to 1 meter 77. Just three athletes remaining in competition. Cheyenne Williamson is the leader. She has not had a miss yet. Erica Harbo of Concordia St. Paul currently sitting in second. And Beyonce Kelly the only other jumper over competition. You're looking at Lloyd McCurdy from Limestone. Just three jumps left in our men's triple jump. Limestone or Limestone's McCurdy currently in third position. This is his final jump in the men's triple jump, trying to improve on 15 meter 88. And the white flag shows that's a clean jump for McCurdy. Currently in third position at 15 meters 88. That is 51 feet and one quarter of an inch. So he is looking to improve on that bronze medal that he currently has. Get out over 16.15 meters to take the title from top eight Clay Wulu. This is the man from the Academy of Arts. Two jumps remaining in the competition here. No improvement there for McCurdy, so he will finish in the bronze. Two jumps remaining. Yakuba Nako from the Academy of Arts, currently sitting in the second position at 15 meters 90. He needs to get to 16.15 to take over the lead. Yakuba Ganako of the Academy of Arts on the runway. And it's not going to happen for him today, so he's going to take a silver medal. And that means our competition is technically over, but one more jump for our champion, Pape Glywulu from Adam State, the senior. 16 meters 15 on his very first jump in the competition. That's 53 feet even. He's already won the gold medal. And sometimes just that bit of mental relief You've already won the competition, so he will look to pop one more and then accept the applause from the crowd for this national championship. Glewulu from Adam State, your gold medalist.
A nice jump, but he was well off the board. You can see the distance even at this angle. So it's a clean jump, but he knows it's probably not going to be an improvement. But our national champion is going to be Pepe Glewulu from Adam State on his very first jump of the competition, 16 meters, 15, 53 feet even. And that first jump held up through all six rounds. And we'll see him a little bit later on the podium. Back to our women's high jump competition. This is Erica Harbo from Concordia St. Paul. And she is going to take a miss at 1 meters 77. And there you see Cheyenne Williamson from Saginaw Valley having a, a wonderful day out here. He's already our leader in the high jump and a first attempt clearance here would be one step further to a second national championship on this day two of the NCAA Division II Women's and Men's National Championship. Yes. Oh. oh, she she almost had it. She is that close. So just three misses in the first round at 1 meter 77. So we'll go back to Beyonce Kelly of California, Pennsylvania. They are the only three to clear 1 meter 74. And now this will be their second attempts at 1 meter 77. And another miss for Kelly. That is just her second miss at this height. Erica Harbo from Concordia St. Paul's second attempt to come at 1 meter 77. And a miss for Harbo. Harbo was fourth this afternoon in our heptathlon, so on the podium for a fourth place finish. She can finish no worse than third in this women's high jump. Cheyenne Williamson now ready for her second attempt at 1 meter 77. And a clearance for Cheyenne Williamson. Day two may be her favorite day of the national championships, and she's been to a lot of national championships. She's a five-time multi-event gold medalist, and she has quite a few championship medals to go in her other events as well. So she is the first one over and the only one over 1 meter 77. So Kelly and Harbo will each have one more attempt. And we'll see if they keep the bar here or if they do raise the bar with any shot at winning the competition. A clearance at this height will not do them as well as if they were to pass and go to the next height. And that just being discussed right now with the two athletes on the track. There you see the women's steeplechase. We are just about ready for the finals in the women's steeplechase. And these athletes did run last night. And the top 12 qualified for this final event. Women's 3,000 meter steeplechase. It is a little bit warmer tonight than it was yesterday. Fastest qualifier in our women's steeplechase, Eleonora Kurtabi of West Texas A&M. She is the defending champion in this event. So she will be the one to watch, the senior from West Texas A&M, Kurtabi. She will be wearing hip number five. And you can see here just beside the 
large figure of Emily Sholkoff from Adams State, the tallest runner in the field. So the women's 3,000 meter steeplechase now underway. 12 finalists qualifying from last night. And you can see the large contingent from Adams State in the North Bowl. Adam State taking advantage of the proximity of this year's national championships. Alamosa just about a two hour drive south and west into the mountains. So a lot of athletes and students here representing Adam State. And this is a big event for the Grizzlies. You can see they have three runners in the finals. Adam State currently looking to improve on their fifth place. Finishing the men are currently in fifth place. The women, on the women's side, Adam State looking for that unprecedented triple. Adam State women, the cross country champions last fall. They are the indoor track and field champions. And if they can score three spots in this steeplechase, that will be a huge step towards trying to capture the outdoor national title as well. So just under 90 seconds for their first 400 meters and as they approach the water jump for the first time, the experienced athletes here all through the water jump for the first time and wearing hip number five, that is the favorite Eleonora Kurtabi from West Texas A&M, our defending champion. And up alongside of her is Ava O'Connor from Adams State. She is the number two seed. She is the, has had a successful indoor season. She was third in the mile in 2022. And this season indoors, she was sixth in the 3000 meters. And she was a member of the distance medley relay team that did take second. So two of our international athletes choosing to take the lead in the steeplechase, Kurtabi, an Italian native, began her collegiate career at Iowa Central before transferring to West Texas A&M, the defending champion, and Ava O'Connor from Ireland, running now at Adams State. She is side by side as they clear that barrier and hit their 800 meter mark just about 247 for their first 800 meters but the pack still tightly together in this 3000 meter steeplechase and we'll see how long our two leaders are content to run at a pace that the field can stay up with them we do expect them to make a surge at some point mm -hmm. Wearing hip number six there, you see Allison Beasley from Western Colorado. She had a strong finish last evening to solidify her qualifying mark. Hip number three is Natalie Graber from Grand Valley State. And then you see O'Connor's Adam State Grizzly teammates, Emily Sholkoff wearing hip number four and Morgan Heights wearing hip number 12. Those are your leaders out at the front. alongside Ashley Corcoran from Southern New Hampshire. This is Ava O'Connor who is setting the pace. And now Natalie Graber of Grand Valley State. This season, Kutabi, the only athlete in the field to run under 10 flat, she's run 957.76. The Lone Star Conference champion this year in the 1500 and this 300 meter steeplechase. She was sixth in cross country and third in the indoor mile. But the steeplechase is Kutabi's favorite event, a two time Texas Relays champion in the 3000 meter steeplechase. So we'll look to her to not let anyone make a break without her. And Ava O'Connor 
from Adam State. Staying wide to make sure that she stays out of trouble. We'll start with our eighth place finisher today with a leap of 15.10 meters from Missouri Southern, Terrence Jackson. Your seventh place finisher, 15.12 meters in the book from Western Colorado, Ishmael Jackson. The field now starting to stretch out a little bit with Kurtabi controlling the pace. Natalie Graber of Grand Valley State staying up with our two leaders. And of course, that is Ava O'Connor wearing the green on green from Adam State. From Western Colorado, Allison Beasley staying up with the front four. But you can still see seven athletes hanging tight as they head down the home stretch. And as they get to that finish line, they will have just over three laps to go. So we can see that break at any time. Eleonora Katarbi. She is out front. She's wary of anybody going to make a break behind her, but she does have the fastest qualifying time. So anybody who thinks they are going to out sprint Kurtabi in the last three laps had better make their move quickly. Ava O'Connor of Adams dropped back, but you can see the Grizzlies currently sitting in fourth, fifth, and seventh position. So they are looking to score three positions to move up in the team standings, but you can bet they would prefer to be in the top three. But this is Kurtabi from West Texas A&M. Just over two laps to go now. Beasley of Western Colorado and Graber of Grand Valley State running one, two, three. Just over 800 meters to go on the track and just about five yards separating the top three. Emily Sholkoff of Adams State now in fourth position. And Kurtabi as the 1500 meter Lone Star Conference champion. That tells you she's got some speed as well. 3000 meter steeper chase. Still a bit of a, a tweener event between some of the middle distance runners who will bump up from the 1500 or the distance runners with some speed will come down from the 5000, this 3000 meter steeplechase. Of course, if you are anywhere in the lead in the last 800 meters, it's going to come down to some foot speed. And that is Kurtabi, who we know has some foot speed. But don't count out Beasley from Western Colorado. A strong finish yesterday in her semifinal. Just over one lap. So as the bell goes off, we're going to see these two with everything they have left. Kurtabi will be the leader into the bell lap. Beasley. She's not out of it yet. But if she's going to go, she needs to go now. That gap is widening. With 300 meters to go, Kurtabi and Beasley. Sholkoff of Adams State has moved into third place. Graber, fourth. Those are the four you see on your screen. Adams State looking to finish three in the top eight. Every point may be valuable in that team score. Just two more barriers. The water jump and the final barrier for Eleonora Katabi. 
and she's clear of the water. So your defending champion, she's coming off the curve, looking to make it two in a row. One at sea level, one at altitude for West Texas A&M senior. She is clear of all the barriers. Eleonora Kurtabi from West Texas A&M. She is going to win this steeplechase today. And a deep sigh of relief. Allison Beasley of Western Colorado is going to be second. And Emily Sholkoff from Adams State is going to pick up those very valuable six points for a third place finish. Graber of Grand Valley will be fourth. Morgan Hikes of Adams State will be fifth. O'Connor is going to be sixth place, so Adam State will pick up three podium points, and that will help them for the overall team scoring. Corcoran will be seventh. Mont Placer from Minnesota State will be eighth, and the final podium finish will go to Caroline Cunningham, 10 46 96, to be a first team All American this year. Correction. Top eight, that'll be Montplacer was eight. 10.38.56 to be an All-American. Cunningham, Dietri, Davis, and Ritma will be second team All-Americans for their ninth through 12th place finishes. The top eight score, the top eight are first team All-American. The first eight will count towards our team scoring. So this event not factored into those scores you see on the right, but Grand Valley State's Natalie Graber with a fourth place finish. So that will bump up the points for Grand Valley. And you can see Adam State at the bottom of those current standings. You're looking at the campus of Colorado State University Pueblo and the Thunder Bowl for this year's Division II Men's and Women's Outdoor Track and Field Championships. We are almost through day two. The next event on the track will be the Men's Steeplechase Finals. They qualified out of the preliminaries last night, so that'll be the next race on the track. And then, of course, this evening, day two, we will finish with our preliminaries in the four by 400 meter relays. Still have a couple of field events going on, the men's discus competition and the women's high jump competition still underway, thanks to a two hour rain delay a little bit earlier today. Did get us a later start for our evening session, but we will bring you a full recap this evening of those field events and all of our championship events we will be crowning eight new national champions on day two of our championships. And then, of course, Saturday's day three will be all finals. And you won't want to miss that competition. Tomorrow, Saturday's events get underway at 11 a.m. with our women's pole vault. We will join you in the evening for the four by 100 meter relays, the first events on the track tomorrow evening. The women's four by one scheduled for 5:10 mountain time. There you see though on the track, this is the men's steeplechase. The top 12 advancing from yesterday's preliminaries. And we'll look for Reese Smith as our defending champion to be the favorite. He ran 8:33.64 last year in North Carolina. He's run 838 this year, and he will be the favorite, the junior from Northwest Missouri State. Smith wearing hip number five. And you can see in the dark green, he is elbowing his way to the front. You'll see him as they avoid the water jump around that first curve. The field starting to shape itself as they run their first 
First lap, we are looking at Caleb Footer from Grand Valley State wearing hip number one, Ben Ahrens from Nebraska Kearney in two. That is Clement Duigo from Adams State in three, Mitchell Dunham of Walsh wearing four, Reese Smith, the aforementioned defending champion, is wearing hip number five. Nixon Correr from Azusa Pacific in six. So Bofrizi from Wingate is seven. Prather of Concord is wearing hip number eight. Perrier from Azusa Pacific. Michael Grabowski from Western Colorado. Max Bonenberger from Colorado Mines. And Albert Hess from Western Colorado around the field. And you see Ben Ahrens of Nebraska Kearney pushing his way to the front. Clement Duigo from Adams State in the fluorescent and dark green. And just behind him is our favorite, Reese Smith of Northwest Missouri State. Ben Ahrens of Nebraska Kearney, he was 11th in this event last year, running 9.02. And Caleb Sutter and Career. So that's the first six as they run on the track as they come into the cut behind the high jump pit for the water barrier. It's Aaron from Dewey Go. Still content to run over 10 minute pace on the track here as all of the field and contention in the men's diesel chase. This one will start to ratchet down over time, but it continues to be Aaron. Do we go Reese Smith now in third and Prather on the outside of the track. And five laps to go now on the track in this men's 3,000 meter steeplechase. Aaron's, Do we go Prather, Smith, and Hess running in the first five positions. So they went through the first thousand meters there at 324. 324 for the first 1,000 meters, so a third of the race now through. This middle third is where the pace will pick up just a little bit. No athlete wants to be in a pack at the finish line unless they are well confident of their finish. So this middle third of the race, of any race really, it is that middle section of the race where it's not always obvious that that is where the race is run, but often it is who is going to go and who is going to keep up and how much strength will they have left at the end. Clement Duigo from Adams State is the first to say it is time to pick up the pace. Ben Ahrens of Nebraska Kearney and Reese Smith. Reese Smith, our defending champion, he, he went out hard last night. He had no doubt that he was going to win that first qualifying heat, but his strategy today a little bit different. He is not leading the pace. He is sitting back on the rail there in third position and letting Duigo and Aarons set the pace. Nixon Korea of Azusa Pacific, that is him wearing hip number six, saying safely on the Outside, running in lane two, staying out of any trouble on the barriers. 
Now Albert Hesse of Western Colorado is the third putter and fourth Fraser and fifth. The best hurdlers in the steeplechase try to take advantage of each barrier. Sometimes it is just going over the barriers with as little effort as possible. Sometimes it is landing quickly with an acceleration that moves you a step or two ahead of your competitor. So Aaron's of Nebraska Kearney has dropped back. We still see Duigo. along with Hess from Western Colorado. So the Western Colorado and Adams State runners know this track well. Last year's conference meet, Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference meet held on this track. CSU Pueblo hosting four meets this season in preparation for hosting the national meet. So plenty of opportunities for the local Division II schools to come and run on this track. But as we speak about it, there is our favorite, Reese Smith, moving to the lead. So he decided that the first half of the race was enough. And you can see there go the leaders on the track. They have just over two laps to go. And there is a massive acceleration. Reese Smith of Northwest Missouri State, the defending champion, he has gone. Clement Duigo from Adams State is hanging in there. Defending champion here in the men's and Albert Hess from Western Colorado. They are your one, two, three with under two laps to go. But Reese Smith definitely looks like he was playing possum. He has made his move and with every step extending that lead and one step closer to a back to back national champion. The MIAA champion in the, both the 5K and the steeplechase. He won this race last year in 8.33. He was fifth in 2021. But he looks very strong now as he heads into this water jump for the penultimate time. And just about 500 meters to go now. 500 meters for back-to-back -back national championship. Albert Hess of Western Colorado now running in second place. Duigo has dropped to three and the pack chasing career of azusa pacific leading the pack he is currently in fourth position but there is our leader around the south curve and he is accelerating his last 400 68 seconds 64 seconds for reese smith and he is down the back stretch and you can see the lead that he has on hess There is Duigo in third, and you can see the pack chasing him, but a clear lead, and we will focus on Reese Smith as he now has just two barriers between him and a back-to-back -back national title. Adam stayed in the third hole as Isaac Fraser and Nixon career on the close. We'll see if Clermont Duigo can hold on. He's down, he's up again. That lead paid off, and that heart jumping anytime you fall in a track meet. That heart gets racing. I don't know if that's a smile or a grimace, but he is now clear of all barriers. Nobody is close. So despite that fall, Reese Smith now knows that he is gonna be a national champion back to back. Here comes Albert Hess. Albert Hess straining for the silver medal. Hess is gonna take silver. And Twigo will hold on to get the bronze for Adam State. So Smith will run 9.07, Hess 9.12, Duigo 9.15, Caleb Footer with a very strong finish for Grand Valley 9.16, Career 9.18, Prather 9.19, Aarons will hang on to a podium position at 9.20, and Michael Grabowski from Western Colorado will take that eighth place podium position at 922.31. There you see your top eight in this men's 3,000 meter steeplechase. Reese Smith made it a little dramatic at the end, but he will be a back to back national champion in the men's steeplechase.
And we are down to our final two events. Those of you who love track meets, you know if you stick around to the end, it's always the 4 by 400 meter relay. We've got the preliminaries tonight. The women's 4 by 400 meter relay coming up next, and that will be followed by the men's. We are about nine minutes away from our women's 4 by 400. It looks like all of our other field events have wrapped up. You see the fans gathered around that north curve and on our west stands. Lots of Adam State here fans there will be interested to see how that all pans out. Looking at our current scoreboard as we head to break, Adam State men, they are in the lead after seven events, and the Adam State women are in second place after seven events. We'll give you a complete recap and current team scores as we finish today, but for now, we're going to take a break before we come back for our women's 4x400 four meter relay. Finishing in sixth, Erica Shamala of oh. Pittsburgh State with a 1.7. Welcome back to the Thunder Bowl at the campus of the Colorado State University Pueblo. We are here for day two of the Division II Men's and Women's National Championships. We've had another great day of track and field, and all we have left now are our 4x400 four meter relay preliminaries. We will have two heats of each, the men and the women, advancing to the finals. And those of you who love going to track meets, you stick around to the end of the meet, you know that 4x400 four is always something that people enjoy. Heat 1 here, we've got Ashland in 2, Winona State in 3, Azusa Pacific in 4, West Texas A&M in 5, Fresno Pacific in 6, Chico State in 7, and Hillsdale in lane 8. The top 2 will advance, plus the next 5 fastest times. 
And we are underway with a clean start in this 4x400 four meter relay. A three curve stagger here in this four by 400 meter relay. So as we see them come down the home stretch, that is Chico State ahead, but again, the three curve stagger, it will not necessarily be who is first across the line for the 400 meter mark. It'll be who is first at the break. That is Chico State on the outside, but now West Texas A&M making a push for the lead at the break. And that is going to be Azusa Pacific in the all black with your leader at the break, West Texas A&M. Again, the top two are safe. They will advance to the finals, so... The goal again being to conserve as much energy as possible and make sure you are in the top two. But if you are going to finish third in your heat, you better have your best time to make sure that you do advance. The Azusa, Pacific. Azusa Pacific and West Texas West Texas A&M. They are in those two top spots, 148-34 and 148-96, 800 meter splits. Fresno Pacific is currently in that third position and Winona State trying to make up the stagger to get into the top three. But it is Zuza Pacific in control on this third leg as they run around the north curve. And as they approach the final leg, Azusa Pacific, West Texas, and Fresno Pacific. Anchor leg for Azusa Pacific scheduled to be Jayla Walker, and she will take off with a good lead over West Texas A&M and Fresno Pacific. Again, the top two will automatically advance, and you can see Azusa Pacific looking comfortable down the back stretch. The tall legs from West Texas A&M, Jordan Brown on their anchor leg. And you can also see hip number three, Winona State making a push. Winona State now into second or into third and making a push for second place at the top of the curve. No relaxing as they come off the curve for the final time. Azusa Pacific will have the lead. West Texas and Winona. And you can see the determination. Azusa Pacific and West Texas A&M, they're going to take the top two qualifying spots. But that surge by Winona State going to get them a 339-38. And you would think that that will be a time that will get them in. The next five fastest non-qualifying times will advance to the finals. And you will see at this point some teams with a little bit of depth may try to substitute a runner and give one of their top athletes or an athlete in multiple events an extra day's rest. But for most of the teams, they've been running their top four all year and they will not change dancing to the finals. So Azusa Pacific and West Texas A&M are in. The rest of the teams will sit on the bubble. You're looking at the results of that men's steeplechase. And that men's steeplechase competition. Down to the top four, Caleb Footer with the Grand Valley State strong finish. He'll be fourth. Our early leader, Clement Duigo from Adams State, the bronze. Second place goes to Albert 
Hess, the sophomore from Western Colorado. And then you see, there you see our champion, back-to-back -back national championships for Reese Smith of Northwest Missouri. And he is happy at the top of that podium for the second time in as many years. That is the men's 3,000-meter steeplechase on the podium. Back to heat number two now of the women's 4x400 meter relay. From the inside out, we'll have Texas A&M Kingsville in two. Lincoln will be in three. Angelo State in four. Cal Poly Pomona in lane five. Lubbock Christian in six. Minnesota State in seven. And Northwest Missouri State in lane eight. You're looking at heat two of the women's four by 400 meter relay on the track at the Thunder Bowl on the campus of Colorado State University Pueblo and they are now underway. Again, the top two will advance and the next five fastest times. This is heat number two. And you can see down the back stretch for the first time, just about an even stagger. No team surging to the lead this three curve stagger. And as they come off the curve and back into the light, we can see that it looks like Lubbock Christian has closed the stagger, running out of lane six. And on the inside in lane four, that is Angelo State in the yellow. On the outside there, you're looking at Northwest Missouri State, but this three curve stagger will come back to bite you on this south curve and you can see quickly moving around the inside of that curve in the all yellow angelo state and they will be your leaders at the break northwest missouri on the outside taking the angle and that was lubbock christian quickly moving back to the inside of the track she will be in third place but this is northwest missouri state now and angelo state on the north curve. Again, just maybe a small advantage to be running in the second heat because you do know the times that you need to qualify. Not that you make any adjustment on the track, but sometimes just that little mental break can help you physically as well. Northwest Missouri State they are going to be the leaders, 147.67 at the midway point, and they'll have that nice lead down the back stretch, along with Angelo State and Lincoln out of Jefferson City, Missouri. Off the curve, end of our third leg, Northwest Missouri State. Here comes Angelo State. You can make up a lot of ground in the last 15, 20 meters of a 4x400 meter relay, and that is exactly what Angelo State has done. They will go from 10 yards back to 10 yards ahead as they go into that final exchange. You see the top two well out in front there. Angelo State and Northwest Missouri State. And as they head down the back stretch, no relaxing, but those two schools with a nice lead, so bearing anything unforeseen 
they will take the two automatic qualifying spots. And as they head into the north curve, we'll see who comes off the curve wanting a victory in this second heat. Fastest qualifying time out of heat one, 338.48. So it looks like heat number two is going to be faster. And the question is, is who's going to want it the most? Angelo State is going to take heat number two, 335.96. So that'll be the fastest qualifying time. Northwest Missouri State is in at 336.04. Cal Poly Pomona will be the third team across the line at 342.61. And as all the times go in, we will let you know that it looks like Angelo State, Northwest Missouri, Azusa Pacific, West Texas A&M. We knew they were all in. Teams qualifying by time will be Winona State, Ashland, Fresno Pacific, Cal Poly Pomona, and it'll be Chico State at 344-44. They will take the final ninth spot in the finals. And our finals in this men's, women's 400, 4 by 400 meters scheduled for tomorrow at 8.55. So with that said, just one more race on the track this evening. It'll be the men's 4 by 400 And we are going to take a short break as the men's 4 by 400 comes onto the track. We're in Pueblo, Colorado for the Division II National Championships. Just one more event on the track, and we'll be back after the break with the 4x400 for the men. Welcome back. We are here just about ready for our final event of the NCAA Division II Men's and Women's National Championship preliminaries. We are going to look at the men's discus as we get ready for that. And you can see in the ring, this is Peyton Barton of Missouri Southern. Our early leader was Kaysen Brown, but on the fifth row, Peyton Barton of Missouri Southern, 58 meters, 16. That's 190 feet, 10 inches for Peyton Barton. 
and he was fifth a year ago, but he stands atop that podium in the men's discus. And as all of our field events now complete today, not only the last event on the track, this will be the last event of day two. We have the men's 4 by 400 meter relay. We're going to run two heats, qualifying the top two in each heat, plus the next five fastest times to the finals. And in our first heat, just getting ready in the blocks there, you can see we're going to have our number two qualifying time. 308.27 this year by Limestone. They're going to be in lane three. Cal State LA will be in four. Lincoln in five. Lovett Christian in six. Texas A&M Kingsville in seven. And Nebraska Kearney in lane eight. And you can see quite a fan's sticking around for our final vape this evening we're a little bit later than scheduled thanks to some weather that came in this afternoon a rain and lightning delay but in your picture there you can see the spanish peaks in the background from the rocky mountains we're here in pueblo colorado on the campus of colorado state university and you are looking at the starting line of our men's four by 400 meter relay They are standing at their block, so we are just about ready for our last two races on the track. From the inside out, Limestone, Cal State LA, Lincoln, Lubbock Christian, Texas A&M Kingsville, and Nebraska Kearney. And at the first exchange, Jaqueline Scott from Texas A&M Kingsville. And as the stagger catches up to that three-curve stagger, it will be Texas A&M Kingsville taking the lead. Top two will automatically qualify. Limestone was our number two qualifier overall this season, 308.27 time. And for the teams who have competed at sea level coming up to altitude, you have every reason to expect that they will have a season best time. This is Lincoln, however, out of Jefferson City, Missouri. They will be the leaders at the midway point, Lincoln and Texas A&M Kingsville. Lincoln. Texas A&M Kingsville. And now moving up Limestone, the top seed in this heat. They are now in that third position on the track. Third 
And as they come off the curve and we head towards the anchor leg, Lincoln, Texas A&M Kingsville, and Limestone running one, two, three. But as we head into the anchor leg, it'll be those top two valuable spots. So keep an eye on that number three team, Limestone. They are the second fastest overall qualifying and going down that back stretch, you can see that they are not going to rely on their time, but they are going to make every push to be in the top two. Lincoln, Texas A&M, Kingsville, and Limestone. One, two, three at the top of the curve. So this is 150 meters to go. Top two are automatically in. Number three, four, and five, they'll rely on their times. But this is going to be Lincoln. They are going to win heat number one. Texas A&M Kingsville is going to hold on to the second spot. Limestone is going to fall. They are going to have to rely on time because moving up into the first qualifying time, Lubbock Christian, they're going to run 309.92. Carney also jumping ahead of Limestone 310.44. So Limestone with the second fastest qualifying time, maybe the altitude getting to them just a little bit, 310.53, so they right now are on the inside, but also on the bubble. Top two are in, top five will advance to the finals. And there you see the athletes and fans still gathered around that starting line. Our second heat now on the track. We are looking at the Academy of Art in lane two. They have the fastest qualifying time this season. They've run 3.05.20. That team of Page, Black, Ham, and Agaiming, they are the team to beat. Academy of Art in lane two. Angelo State will be in three. Lenore Rhine in four. Mississippi College in lane five. West Texas A&M in six. Pittsburgh State in seven. Northwest Missouri in lane number eight. Generally, you find that the teams at the top of the standings for your team championship are going to field teams in the four by 400 meter relay. So every point that comes out of this is important and any team that doesn't run their best in the preliminaries doesn't make the finals and therefore no chance of scoring any team points but we are just about ready on the track for our last race of day two the second heat of the men's four by 400 meter relay from the inside out academy of art angelo state Lenore rhine mississippi college west texas a and m Pittsburgh State and Northwest Missouri.
And a clean start in this final race on the track. And as they head down the back stretch, the stagger looking even. Pittsburgh State on the outside in lane seven, making up a little bit of the stagger. And on the inside, that is the Academy of Art. They're the team to watch. Macarius Page, the leadoff leg for the team that has run the fastest time this season at 3.05. Again, just that slight advantage for this second heat to know the time that they have to beat. But this is a loaded field this year. All of these teams making the finals with very, very fast seeding times. Just a few seconds separating our third and fourth teams from our 11th and 12th teams on the track. But after the break, it's Pitt State going to the lead. So the Gorillas looking to repeat as team champions in good situation right now on the track, looking to advance their 4x400 four meter relay team. Academy of Art currently running in the second place, and that is Northwest Missouri State moving up on the outside at the exchange. But clean exchanges for the first three, and it'll remain Pitt State, Academy of Art, and Northwest Missouri as we head into this third leg. And the Gorillas opening up a lead on the back stretch. But for West Texas State, that is Brian Pittman who has made a huge serve. West Texas State coming from the back of this pack. They are now up into second place as we head into the final exchange. And can he even get them into the lead? At the final exchange, it's going to be Pitt State and West Texas State in those first two valuable positions. The Academy of Art dropping back into third place. And that is Mississippi College, Northwest Missouri currently running in the third and fourth. And the Academy of Art has also dropped back. So our two top times coming into this preliminary heat are in danger of not making the finals. But they're off the curve for the last time. West Texas State and Pitt State. This is West Texas A&M. They are going to surge from behind in the last two legs. They are going to win this third heat. Pitt State is going to hand on for the second qualifier. So we'll check the times here and get you your finalists. West Texas A&M 3.07. So that is the fastest time qualifying. Pittsburgh State 308.86. So along with Lincoln and Texas A&M Kingsville, they will be in. Here are your top five qualifiers. Mississippi College, Lubbock Christian, Lenore Rhine, Nebraska Kearney, and it is going to be Limestone taking the final qualifying spot. Academy of Art has to be a disappointing preliminary for them, they were 3.05.20 coming in, but they can only muster 3.12.09, and they will not advance to the final. So we do know four of our qualifying teams into the final for tomorrow's 4x4. Four four. That's West Texas A&M, 3.07.28. Lincoln, Missouri at 3.08.11. Texas A&M, Kingsville at 3.08.84. And, and Pittsburgh State. As you look at the final results of this men's 4x400 four meter heat number two, on the sides you do see the team scores. We are just through eight events in our men's division and seven on the women's side, so you can see what those team scores are generally going to look like at the end of day two. We'll give you a full recap, but for the end of day two from the Thunder Bowl on the campus of CSU Pueblo, this has been day two of the Division II Men's and Women's Outdoor Track and Field Championships. Thank you for watching, and we will see you tomorrow.